Hey, it's Ramsey Dewey over here in Shanghai, China. Welcome to another edition of Q&A with the coach. Today we have a question from our friend Joe. Joe wants to know if I can please do a guided meditation video so, so I can fall asleep to your voice. Ooh. Huh. Thanks in advance. Okay, Joe. Sure. Why not? I've never even attempted a guided meditation video. I'm not exactly sure what that is. But I will attempt to guide your meditation. There are lots of ideas about out there about what meditation is. Many of them come from Eastern religious thought. The idea of emptying yourself of all thoughts and desires and all of this stuff. And, and just being, just existing or, or not. Right? If we look up that word, meditate... As far as Western definitions go, what does that mean? To think deeply about something. So let's think deeply about falling asleep. Maybe I'll put my headphones on for this one so I can hear my voice too. It's a dark and stormy night here in Shanghai. It is rainy. The rain's coming down outside. I don't know if you can... Hear that? My microphone is not directed toward the rainfall, rather just my voice. So why don't you listen to my voice as well? I had a conversation as I was putting my eight-year-old daughter to sleep. I was about to leave the room. She said, Daddy, come back. Talk to me for a little bit. So we talked. And she told me that talking to me made it easier to fall asleep faster. It was a special moment. Special moment for her, special moment for me. So I spoke to her, and she fell asleep. And I left the room and closed the door, so. Think deeply about not thinking deeply. Think deeply about not thinking deeply. I suppose that can be a theme of a guided meditation we shall attempt to do. So you're trying to fall asleep. Don't look at a screen. You can listen to the sound, but don't look at a screen. Lights shining in the eyes. Shut them out. Turn them off. In fact, turn them off. For as long as you can before you lie down. And if you didn't, that's okay. Just lie down with the lights out anyway. And as the rain falls down, billions of raindrops crashing down on the concrete right now, outside on the city streets of Shanghai. It's a type of peacefulness that we don't always see in this concrete jungle in which I live. When it rains here, one thing that's very different from where I grew up in a parched desert, small agricultural farming town, when it rained, people would literally thank God for the rain, for sending moisture so the crops could grow, bringing new life to the world. But in the big city, in this urban jungle, night, scene to night, when the rain falls down, everybody goes inside to stay dry. Dry. Strange choice of words in this Shanghai summer where the humidity is at maximum. So you always feel wet, never dry, but that's okay. You can lie down without a sheet on top of you and still feel surrounded by warmth. Unless you like it cool, turn on a fan, maybe. If you don't have one, that's okay. Imagine one. The mind, after all, 
is the most powerful tool you have as far as life and especially meditation goes. Because where we put the focus of our mind, that is ultimately where we will be. What is a dream after all? What is a dream after all? We close our eyes, we lie still. Maybe we turn, we stretch a little bit, we go to the left, ah, now it feels nice to go back to the right. Maybe we roll onto our stomach, the back to our back, that's okay, whatever you need to do. Look at the animals. When they sleep, they coil up into a ball, they stretch, they move, they undo all the kinks in their spine, they stretch out their toes and their claws and their joints, and they push and they pull. Why? Because when we do that, we stress those muscles for a moment, bringing them to a state of relaxation upon release. So try that. Stretch, push, pull, flex, and let go. And just lie there for a moment. Maybe do it again if you need. Do it on the other side if that feels good. Great. Think about breathing for a moment. Throughout the day we think about breathing. Sometimes, most of the time, we don't. We simply breathe when we need to breathe. That's okay. It's what the body does. When we exercise, we have the opportunity to focus breathing, to deliberately breathe. If we move quickly, heavily, athletically, we begin to hyperventilate, <gasps> pulling the air in, whether we want to or not, but we can always, always focus on the exhale, <sighs> push the air out. So focus on that for a moment. Let your body breathe in when it wants to breathe in. Automatically, it will suck that air in. Feel your lungs just enough. But then focus on the exhale. Just let it out. Nothing fancy. Just let it seep out. Because when you sleep, that's what will happen. The body will breathe in automatically when it needs that breath and then oh, the weight of the world will push that breath out until the next one so just breathe out until the next one and then breathe out until the next one. And if you are still not dreaming yet, that's okay. Too many people in this world stress themselves out because they lie down with an expectation that after they go through their nightly ritual, they should be drifting off in a blissful slumber. And they feel cheated somehow because they're still not quite there. That's okay. Embrace that. Enjoy the moment of simply not doing anything. This is the time to not stress about not doing anything. This is the time to celebrate not doing anything. Throughout the day we toil, we have deadlines and expectations. 
people to see, places to go. And if we don't meet those, oh, woe betide us, but right now, put all that away. The only expectation is no expectation right now. Just lie there and enjoy. Enjoy the moment of not doing anything. And that's okay. Well, is your mind clear? Or are you still focusing on things that happen throughout the day? Disappointments. Excited about something, perhaps. These are things that will not be resolved right now. These are things for tomorrow, right now. Focus on only not doing anything. The lovely bliss of not doing anything until the subconscious takes the reins. Not control, but takes the reins, and we drift over to the other side. We put so much importance on the waking world, and yet the other half of our lives we barely remember. Maybe when you wake up in the morning, Pick up a pen, pick up a paper, jot down what you remember about the other side, but right now, just slip into that moment. Slip into that moment. Imagine for a moment a free fall falling through the mattress, falling through the bed. If it wasn't there, boom, down you would go. Not into the floor, but into an empty oblivion, a space, a flight, and down we fall. As if floating but falling, as if floating but falling. And when we recognize a world beneath us, here we are, arrived on the other side. This world where conscious decisions are not holding the reins any longer. A world where we evaluate processes, where we evaluate experiences differently. We see images, we may hear sounds, colors, patterns. What are they really? An attempt to understand It's simply conscious thought when we awake, attempting to understand our experience on the other side, painting the picture, creating the scene. What was that? Where are we now?
fly for a moment. I don't know how you might think. It doesn't matter. Fly for a moment. As I said, the mind is the most powerful tool you have. And in this place, my friend, the laws of physics no longer apply, give way to the laws or lack thereof of metaphysics. So fly for a moment. Stay up there. And look. And move through the cityscape. Watching the world below. Descend slowly, not too quickly, slowly. Come slowly down, down, down into the dream world and stay there, stay there throughout the night while your body does its work, while now your body takes the reins instead of the mind, healing, repairing, rebuilding, preparing for the morning giving you a break, giving you repose and a chance to fly out there to the other side.